is in the flat. Look for Ropa Sada to be a constant target for Detmer again this evening. Posada's hauled in at least five passes in two different games this season. I would not be surprised if this is game number three for Posada to move into that category. And if that short passing game gets working and Detmer is able to have a turnover-free evening, the Havlinas' chances to win this game, I think, will be really high. Now on defense, the Hawks are going up against an offense led by quarterback Ty Curry. And Curry's had an up and down season. He's second in the conference in touchdown passes with 11, but, he's, but no one in that conference has more than the eight interceptions he's thrown. And he'll be going up against a secondary that's allowed the fewest yards per game through the year in the Lone Star Conference this season, an average of just 156.2 yards permitted in the passing game. That mark is also 16th in the country. With how often Curry has put the ball in harm's way this season, there should be opportunities for turnovers for Haskell Buffs defensive backs. And they're going to need to take advantage of those chances for the Javelinas tonight. And this is a talented secondary that Buff and his, coach, his defensive backs coaches Eddie Moten, Kevin May, and Ryan Rodriguez have molded. They've allowed opponents to complete just 41.4% of their passes, the best in the Lone Star Conference by far. And I would expect the secondary to be trying to force Curry into making some bad decisions tonight. We're going to take our first break here on the pregame show. The opening kickoff is just about five minutes, and we'll be right back with the start of the action between the Javelinas and the Wolves here on KTAI and the Javelina Sports Network. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back to Havelina Stadium. The Havelinas and the Western Oregon Wolves just moments away from kicking off the 2-3 and three Hogs facing off against the 2-3 and three Western Oregon Wolves today. The second consecutive non-conference matchup for the Havelinas and their third consecutive home game. They will complete what will be a essentially a four-week, a one-month homestand next week when they host the team that's currently ranked number five in the nation. That is the MSU Texas Mustangs. They'll be here just like tonight for a 7 o'clock kickoff next week. Myself and Nate Cartisa will be there to bring you all the action. One of the keys for this game, getting back to the point I was making prior to our first break of the pregame, will be for Western Oregon, they're going up against a really talented secondary. Six different players in the secondary have multiple pass breakups, and Nick Stipp, leads the squad with with two interceptions. Western Oregon's goal at the start of this game should be to try and establish their running game early. Take the ball out of Curry's hands. Moving the ball on the ground should be a priority for the Wolves today. 
The Havilians have allowed over 150 yards and two, touch, two touchdowns rushing to each of their last three opponents. And in all likelihood, the Wolves are going to try and get that running game going early. Take the pressure off Ty Curry. I don't think that Western Oregon would want to put Curry in a spot where he feels like he has to win this game by himself. I'd also expect to see some run pass options for Curry, who does possess some mobility. He had better than 60 yards rushing in week two for Western Oregon against Central Washington. Western Oregon wins the toss. They're going to defer. The Javelinas are going to take the football to start off. And the opening kickoff is just moments away. The Hogs in their gold uniform tops, the gold jerseys with blue numbers, white lining on the numbers on both the front and the back, and across the front just above the numbers it says Javelinas in blue with white piping. Hogs with simply plain white pants and a white helmet, three stripes down the middle. The... Middle stripe is blue. It's flanked by a pair of gold stripes. Havilina's in script on both sides of the helmets in blue with gold piping. Western Oregon in their white uniforms, as you would expect. Gray helmets with a maroon W with white surrounding it on both sides of the helmet. White uniforms, numbers in maroon with a black stroke on it and white pants. The sun slowly starting to sink out of the sky here as we approach 7 o'clock in Kingsville, Texas. The fifth game of the season for both the Javelinas and the Wolves. Hobbs, Hobbs looking for their second win in a row. Andrew Saldana will kick it off to Aaron Jackson and Jeff Carr. Jackson had a 65-yard kickoff return last week. Carr averaging 17.9 yards per run back on the season. The kickoff, kickoff sails deep into the end zone for Aaron Jackson, who bobbles it and then has to scoop it up, and then it gets ruled a touchback. And that will cue Coy Detmer Jr. and the Havilena offense. Detmer, as I mentioned, coming off maybe his best game as a Havilena. Comes into this game with 990 yards passing to his credit, nine touchdowns and seven interceptions. He's completing 58.7% of his passes. The junior quarterback in the shotgun with three tight ends who now all separate. And it becomes a four-receiver set with trips to the left side. Detmer to throw, looking deep down the right, over the middle for Tyler Wilson. Caught the 45. Breaks the tackle across the 45 to the 40. Into Western Oregon territory, left side, 30. So finally the ball pops out inside the 20. Western Oregon picks it up and runs it back across the 30. Right sideline, 40. 45, 50. And finally tackled in Havilena territory is Dominic Akana. And a wild start to this game. What was a huge play for the Javelinas. Ends with a turnover. And now Western Oregon with the football. Uh, in good field position across midfield. The ball was knocked out by, I believe, Nate Proctor. And then Akana took it back and ran it back about... 35 yards and here is Ty Curry in an eye formation Curry fumbles the snap tries to fall on it and I believe he was able to two plays two fumbles there's a start for a game you don't see every day Curry a junior from Eureka California 57.1% completion percentage so far for 1129 yards he's averaging better than 225 yards per game 11 touchdowns 8 interceptions and now has a second down and 11. Offside eye formation again. Two receivers, one to either side. Four down linemen for the Hogs. Hand off to Amari Land. Tries to cut to the outside. Breaks a tackle and gets swarmed under at about the 37. And I think someone might have lost a shoe on that play. And it is Amari Land. And he hustles off the field. Replaced by Nico Jackson. Jackson and Land figure to be the top two running backs today for the Wolves. Their res main receivers are going to be Ty John Prince and Chris Mack with Caleb 
Tingstad and Evander Willingham sharing the tight end duties. On the offensive line, Jacob Pruitt is the center. Ron Rose and Burke Alba are the guards. Aaron Turner and Joseph Gonzalez are the starting tackles. Third down and five. Western Oregon needs about the 31 to move the chains here in their first series. Ty John Prince motions out wide to the right side. Third on the left side. Pass picked up by Brajon Crenshaw, but a flag is thrown. They might get Crenshaw for interference. And actually, the call is going to be holding against Crenshaw. The interference did not, look, did not look like it was there, but the referee called it holding. Crenshaw must have held the receiver out of the break. That was Thomas Wright who was the intended receiver. And looking at the replay, plenty of hand fighting between... Crenshaw and Wright, but unable to see. As the call is confirmed, it was Nick Stiff, not Brajon Crenshaw, according to the official. Tough to see on the replay if there was any holding because they go out of the frame quickly. But the, the flag is thrown. The call made nonetheless. First down and 10 for the Wolves on the Havelina 26-yard line. Hogs went for a big play out of the gate. Looked like they had it. Tyler Wilson fumbles, however. Western Oregon picks it up. Now they have the first scoring opportunity of the day. Shotgun three receiver. Sean Landa is showing blitz. He does not blitz. Hand off right side. Hit in the backfield and dropped is Nico Jackson. Diving in was Tremichael Tut. Tut, one of the leaders on this team. Make that six and a half tackles for a loss on the season for the sophomore linebacker from Channel View, Texas. On defense for Tamuk. Brandon Jones and Caleb Valentine occupy the spot of spots of defensive ends. And Vaughn Taylor in right now to occupy the nose tackle spot, although you'll see a number of guys rotate, whether it's Cody Gardner, Sean Sims, Jamar Davis, we'll all see time on that line. Jalen Harrison and Tremichael Tutt are the linebackers in this, what usually operates as a 4-2-5. Second and 10, snap to Curry, back to throw, rolling left. Being rushed steps up, he's going to run, stumbles at the 25. He probably had at least a few more yards, couldn't keep his feet. And third down coming up, the secondary for the Havlin is a talented secondary we talked about in pregame. Jordan Seminot and Brajon Crenshaw are the corners with Peyton Hendricks, Devontae Williams, and Sean Landes, the starting safeties. But we'll see a lot of Nick Stiff. You'll also see Aaron Jackson come in at corner. This coaching staff has no compunction about rotating their defensive backs. They have confidence in the depth that this roster has in those defensive back positions. Third and 10. Curry shotgun three receivers. No blitz. Rolling to the right side. Trying to look downfield. Here comes a pressure and he just throws it away. Curry with Jalen Harrison in his face. Good coverage by the Hogs in the defensive backfield. And all Curry could do was just throw the ball away and save a field goal attempt for Saldana. Saldana this season is 5 of 9, his longest kick, 47 yards. This will be about 43 yards from the left hash with 11.40 to go in the first quarter for the first score of the game. Jacob Cantola is the holder. Spot is down, kick is up. It is good. And with 11.36 to go, Western Oregon takes advantage of a turnover and they make that into... The first points of the game, a 43-yard field goal by Adrian Saldana. They lead this one 3-0, just a shade over 11 and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. Hogs probably thought they were off to a pretty good start on that first play, that completion to Wilson. I mentioned in the pregame, they hit a number of big plays like that last week. And they started off this game with another one in that vein, but unfortunately, a turnover at the end of it put Western Oregon in prime field position. They take advantage with the field goal. A completion of Wilson went for 55 yards. That's the longest connection between Detmer and Wilson this season. In fact, that's 
more yards than Wilson had with on three catches to this point in the year. Carr and Jackson once again back to receive the kickoff. Saldana boots it deep. Jackson will let it go out of the end zone for a touchback. And Tamilk will start once again at the 25-yard line. Which gives me the chance to give you the Tamuk starters on offense. Jeff Carr gets to start a tailback, although Nick Pellerin and Josh Oglesby figure to see plenty of action there. Devin Milburn, or I check that Aaron Dilworth and Tyler Wilson with Donovan Moore figure to be the main receivers, although, as I said, you'll see a lot of Devin Milburn. Ropa Sada and Torrey Thomas in a tight end. Demmer under center with two receivers. Donovan Moore goes in motion. Hand off up the middle of the car, cutting to his left in the middle of the line, gets back to about the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Narciso Grimaldo and Justin Johnson start at the tackle spots with Derenick Landers and Jorge Rios, the guards. The center is Moses Horn the third. This offensive line has been shuffled about so much this season because of injuries and ineffectiveness. The Hawks are searching for five healthy bodies from week to week. Handoff to Carr, left side, cuts back inside, squirts ahead of the 28-yard line. Three-yard run for Carr, and third down and seven. Coming up for Detmer and the Havelinas, they converted third downs at a rate of 35.8% this season. That is fifth best in the Lone Star Conference. Hogs trailing three to nothing. We are at about ten and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Two receivers to the far side right as the Hogs go from right to left. Dilworth and Moore are the two receivers. Tight end Thomas goes in motion into the backfield on the right side. Detmer with a play fake back to throw. Pressure coming. D ball down the left side for Moore under through him. Moore was trying to come back to the ball, but Detmer Detmer's pass was a little bit underthrown. And Moore couldn't make it back in time to snag it fourth down. Ryan Reynolds will go back to receive this punt. Reynolds averaging 13 yards per punt return this season with a long of 30. Stands at his own 35 while Julio De La Garza, who is averaging 33.2 yards per boot, will kick it away. Western Oregon showing a rush. Good snap to De La Garza. Just gets it off a high, deep kick. Fair catch way for the 35. Reynolds is tripped there, but I believe he was tripped by his own player. And no flag has come out. So I believe it will be a simple first and ten. No flag thrown on the play. And that's a 36-yard punt by De La Garza and obviously no return. So ten minutes and ten seconds to go. We are in the first quarter. And the Western Oregon Wolves with a 3 to nothing lead over the Texas A&M Kingsville Havelinas. And this is... Another busy week in the Lone Star Conference as far as the football slate is concerned. Angelo State is visiting Western New Mexico. West Texas A&M is hosting UT Permian Basin, and that is a West Texas squad that's receiving votes nationally. The number 21 team in the country, Tarleton State, they are in Stephenville, and that is where the Havelinas will be two weeks from now. Host And the Texans are hosting Eastern New Mexico. Whereas the number nine team in the nation, Texas A&M Commerce, they are in Wichita Falls for probably one of the most anticipated matchups of the Division II football regular season. They're facing off against MSU Texas. And the winner of that game almost has a clear path to the Lone Star Conference title. Now MSU Texas is undefeated. Commerce has one loss. But it was not a conference loss. So both of those teams are still without a defeat in the LSC. And it was the winner of that game last year, MSU Texas, that went on to win the conference. And the Mustangs looking for a repeat performance. Of course, it was Commerce that went on to win the national title. And Western Oregon's offense back out on the field. Offside eye formation. Two receivers. Three down linemen for Haskell Buff and this defense. Curry to throw, looking left, blitz coming, throwing deep, down the middle, into Havlina territory, incomplete. Looking for Ty John Prince, who was 
in, who was being covered by Aaron Jackson but had a step on the Tamuk cornerback. Oregon going for the throat there on first down. Curry's throw just a little bit too far for Prince. Second down and 10. Brian Reynolds in the game. He is wide to the right side. Stacked formation. He is stacked behind Chris Mack. Two receivers left. Tyler Sweet and Ty John Prince. Shotgun formation. Wolves going from left to right. For those of you listening on KTAI. Curry. Handoff to Land. Hit quickly and spun down by Brandon Jones. Might have gotten a yard. Good play by Jones. Third down and nine. And those are the kind of plays the Hogs would do well to make early in this game. Slow down that running game. Make Curry put the ball up a lot. And this secondary should have opportunities for interceptions if Curry's throwing the ball. Empty backfield with the running back land kind of in an H-back set on the right side. Three receivers left. Blitz being shown off the edge. Here they come. Curry rolling right. Pressure coming. Pass caught in, pa inside the 40 or past the 40-yard line, but Land stumbles out of bounds short of the first down. Land caught it about the 43, but he was heading towards the sideline when he hauled it in and couldn't get turned upfield in time to get the first down. It's fourth down and three. There are two punters on this roster for Western Oregon, Nate Osborne and Andrew Gross. Gross is out to kick right now. Two return men back for the Javelinas. Aaron Jackson and I believe Connor Perkins is the other. Low snap, bounced back, but just getting, off, getting it off is Osborne. Perkins back inside the five, takes it at the one. Now runs left across the five, tries to break a tackle, and is upended around the six-yard line. Perkins, in all likelihood, just lost track of where he was on the field. You never want to feel, they tell you never to feel the punt inside the ten. He took that one at about the two. And the Hogs begin this drive at their own six. A number of different players have been back to return punts for the Havlinas this season. Donovan Moore, Sean Landes, there it was Jackson and Perkins. Now on offense, Nick Pellerin is in. Two receivers, Moore and Dilworth, who is way wide on the right side of the formation. Ball is spotted on the left hash. Two tight ends, Posada and Thomas, who go in motion from left to right. Now Thomas comes back in motion left side. Play fake to Pellerin, left flat for Moore. Gets across the line of scrimmage, gets hit by his own guy. Gets to about the 10. That tackle was really made by Narciso Grimaldo after a four-yard gain. Second down and six. And Rokeem Paul comes in for Donovan Moore. And two of the Tamuk trainers are out to tend to the senior tight end from Katy, Texas, Posada. And was his 19th catch of the season. And he's closing in on 150 yards for the year. Has one touchdown to his credit. That came against Eastern New Mexico. And he is up and walking off under his own power. Might have just gotten a stinger, but shouldn't speculate. My mistake. First down and 10 anyway, coming up from the 26. Alan Smith coming in at receiver for the Javelinas. Smith, one of the taller targets on this team at six foot four. Tyler Wilson goes split to the right side. Two men in the backfield with Detmer, including Pellerin, who is the deep man on the pistol. Tight end goes in motion off the right side. And off Pellerin, trying to get around. Right tackle, turns upfield across the 30, 35, 40. Still in bounds, 50 along the sideline. He's shoved out of bounds. He'll have a first down. Nick Pellerin for a 21. And the Hogs offense is on the move. The starters on defense for, for Western Oregon. Court Hammond, Jake Blackburn, and Isaiah Molden, who occupies the middle, make up the defensive line. The four linebackers, Andrew Weber and Bo Heiberger on the outside with Nate Proctor and Tyler Wharf on the inside. Derek Parnell, Dominic Aquina are the corners. Curtis Anderson and Joey Ruse are the safeties. Quick pass left side for Dilworth from Denver. Shakes off one tackle, comes back to the inside, and gets wrapped up around the line of scrimmage. He had a couple yards, but tried to get around two more defenders and ended up getting wrapped up around the line where the play started. 
Call it second down and nine. Seven minutes to play in the first quarter. Three nothing Western Oregon. Thank you for tuning into the Havelina Sports Network and KTAI 91.1. Dilworth and Tyler Wilson, the two receivers right side, offset eye formation. Detmer takes a snap, play fake. Looking right side, trying to go deep. Now pressure comes in, pocket collapses. Detmer gets sacked. Back at the 41-yard line, Nate Proctor got in to take down the quarterback. And third down and long coming up. Quarterback protection such a key, not just today, but any day for any offense. And Detmer's excelled this season at escaping the pocket, buying more time for himself, but just nowhere for the junior QB to go right there. And he's saddled with a third and 16. Donovan Moore and Jacob Armstrong, two receivers left. Aaron Dilworth right. Armstrong goes in motion. Detmer to throw. Looking left for a screen. Pellerin gets held up. And the pass is incomplete. That was read perfectly by Skylin O'Brien. And O'Brien, and now Pellerin getting into it with one of the Western Oregon players. I believe that was Devontae Hubbard, who was having a few words with Nick Pellerin. And O'Brien looked like he certainly had a hold of Pellerin's jersey. Wouldn't let him get out in the route on the screen, but with O'Brien right there, that play probably wasn't going anywhere anyway. And Reynolds back to receive another punt from De La Garza, his second of the night. High snap, De La Garza corrals it, gets off a line drive, kick down the left side that's going to bounce at the 30, still rolling inside the 20. And now Jacob Armstrong dives on it at around the 13, another good kick from De La Garza to pin Western Oregon inside their own 15-yard line. It's a 46-yard kick by Julio De La Garza. And the Havelina defense is back on the football field. Western Oregon on their first possession only needed to go 15 yards to set up for the 43-yard field goal by Adrian Saldana. They start this one 87 yards away from what would be the game's first touchdown. Three receivers and a bunch wide left. Single running back next to Curry. Hand up to Nico Jackson. Gets across the 15 to the 16. Tackled there by Tremichael Tutt, the second leading tackler on this Timuk defense coming into today with 35 stops. Peyton Hendricks leads the team with 40. Hendricks has had 35 tackles to his credit over the course of the last three weeks. Curry gets the call in from the sideline. The ball is spotted on the right hash on the near side as the Wolves go from left to right. Three receivers for the junior quarterback. Gets the shotgun snap. Hand off Jackson. Cuts back off the right side. Breaks a Landes tackle, but then is run down by two more Havelinas. Jordan Seminot and Brandon Jones were there. No gain for Jackson. Third down coming up. Tried a little bit of a misdirection. Highlands ran that a lot last week. They give the back to the running back who fakes one way and comes back in the other direction. But the Hogs were not fooled. And another third down for Curry. And these are the opportunities where the Hogs should be looking for turnover opportunities, especially in the secondary. Jamar Davis is in to occupy the nose tackle spot. Haskell Buff not afraid to blitz in these situations. Two receivers left, one right. Snap to Curry. Only three men rushing. Curry rolls left. Now pressure coming. Pass to Jackson. The flat gets across the 20. He's got a first down 25. And the Wolves... We'll move the chains. That play goes for 15. Curry in the early going two of four for 22 yards. Set five yards behind the center with three receivers. Play fake to Jackson looking down the middle over through Reynolds. 
by about five yards and good coverage there by Devontae Williams. Curry might have been just looking for a place to get rid of the football because that throw was inaccurate to a covered receiver, which is never a good combination for a quarterback, second and 10. 3.47 to go. We're still in the first quarter. 3 nothing Wolves leading the Javelinas here at Javelina Stadium. Game three of four consecutive contests at home. The Hogs have started one and one in this four-game homestand. Curry under pressure. Brandon Jones coming in. Pass gets off across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. That was Amari Land who made the catch. Great awareness by Curry as he was being tackled. Now there's a flag in the backfield. Curry just kind of flung it to land who picked up positive yards will check the flag it might be a hold and that goes against Aaron Turner and looking at the replay Turner almost certainly had a hold of Brandon Jones face mask as he was trying to prevent Jones from sacking Curry but the Hans will take the 15 yard penalty even if it repeats the down just the same Second and 25, and that's, you'd say, just as good as a hold because just as good as a sack, really. And same as a hold, but five extra yards for the Hogs. Man in motion for Curry, who has four receivers, trips to the right side, passing the flat for Reynolds, too high. Couldn't climb the ladder for it, incomplete. That's a play that the Havilinas like to run a lot. The pass in the flat to the receiver, kind of one of those tunnel screens or smoke screen plays, but Reynolds, who's not a tall guy, couldn't get up high enough to catch that one. Reynolds listed at just 5'7", 155. Third and 25. We had a third and 25 last week. It was a third and 25 for the Javelinas. A few yards back on this same side of the field, they recalled a play that went for 64 yards. Curry with four receivers, will drop back, rolling to the right side, has all day, throwing downfield, pass incomplete. He was throwing for Tyler Sweet, who was being covered by Dynamite Jones Fagata, and the pass was too high, fourth down, and Curry's lucky that pass was an interceptive. There's a safety a few yards behind Sweet. It would have been a room service interception. But the Havilinas will have to settle for what should be good field position as Perkins and Jackson are back to receive another punt from Andrew Gross. Gross just gets it off. A short kick that's going to bounce past midfield. And then it rolls back to the Havilinas side of the field and bounces to the Tamuk 48-yard line. So a funky bounce. The ball ends up right about where it first landed. And Tamuk will begin this drive at their own 48. Second punt of the game. And a decent start for Gross. He's averaging 45.5 yards on those two boots. And the onus gets moved back onto Coy Detmer Jr. And this offense. Detmer 4 of 6 for 76 yards so far. The one blemish against this Tumuk offense was that fumble by Wilson after his 55-yard catch and run. But Detmer with 76 yards, threw for 296 last week, and no one on this team would remind a repeat performance. And it was more than once last week that the Hogs, in situations like this, tried a deep ball right out of the gate. They threw one to Ryan Martinez in a similar spot last week. And the Hogs threw, as I said in pregame, a number of deep balls against New Mexico Highlands, which is against what their MO had been established as over the course of the last few seasons. Ball spotted on the left hash. The Hogs will be going from right to left. And Joseph Partita is back in at center. Three tight ends for the Hogs. Brent Hertel, Ropasada, and Torrey Thomas all on the left side of the offense. The only wide receiver is Wilson. 
He is split out to the right. Snap to Detmer. Hand off Jeff Carr. Makes a man miss in the backfield, but only gets a yard. And Western Oregon keying on Carr on that play. And the three tight ends go out. Three receivers come in. Martinez, Armstrong, and Dilworth, who will all go to the right side of the formation. Wilson, wide left. Shotgun with Carr is Detmer. High snap, pulls it down, gives it to Carr. Cuts back up the middle, gets to the 45, and maybe picks up an extra yard. Seven-yard run for Jeff Carr. Really shifty back. He showcased that shiftiness on his 55-yard touchdown run last week. Made what seemed like half a dozen cuts on his way through the New Mexico Highlands defense for his second touchdown of the season. Third and manageable, third and two with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Three-nothing Wolves. Same formation, trips to the right, one receiver left. Blitz being shown, Carr goes in the flat. Detmer's gonna keep it up the middle, stretch into the 42 where he gets planted in the turf. He is right near the marker. I haven't seen a first down signal yet. They're gonna spot him just short. It'll be fourth down and half a yard. And there is no punter coming on the field for the Havlings. They bring in an extra tight end, that's Josh Hockless. A sneak would not be a bad idea here. The Hogs, though, have a full house backfield with three men behind Detmer. Detmer gives to Carr, dives into the line, gets pushed back. He will not get the first down. Carr was met at the line by more than one Western Oregon defender. And unfortunately for the Hogs, there was nowhere for Carr to go. They turn it over on downs. So Tamuk begins that drive with great field position but can't capitalize. And now their defense trying to hold fast again. And Bo Heiberger was the, the first guy in who really made contact with Carr and stood him up at the line, knocked him back. And there was no forward progress after that for the Havilina tailback. Three receivers for Curry. Two men to the left. Sean Landa is showing blitz off the edge. Here he comes. Play fake. Curry under pressure. Rolling left. Pass caught at midfield. A short gain to Chris Mack. Or actually make that a seven-yard gain. Kayla Valentine was bearing down on Curry as he got that pass off. Tumuk has not had trouble getting pressure on Curry in the early going, but they're still looking for their first sack. This coming up might be the last play of the first quarter as the clock winds down under 40 seconds. Two receivers, deep man in the backfield behind Curry. Play fake Curry, looking right side, throwing deep, trying to hit his receiver over. Seminot incomplete. Western Oregon wants a flag. More than one white jersey waving for a penalty, but no such flag was forthcoming as Seminot in tight coverage on Chris Mack. Third and three. And I really thought that the Wolves were coming out in this game to want to establish their running game. They have been way more aggressive than I expected. A lot of deep throws from Curry so far. Devin Fortier is in as the third down back. Two receivers right, one to the left. Blitz being shown by the blue and gold, and now the offense will reset as signals being sent in on the sideline. Now the snap goes over the head of Curry. Fortier picks it up back at the 30. 35, 40, he's run out of bounds. About eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. And that I would expect that would be on the center. Jacob Pruitt clearly not on the same page. With the offense, every all these skill position players turn to the side to get the call, and then Pruitt looked to the sideline for a second, then went back to preparing to snap and just snapped it when no one was looking. Just getting off the punt is gross. Aaron Jackson takes it right side of his own 15. They're up the middle of the 20, cuts left back to the right and is dropped at around the 22. 
I was just looking at that replay one more time. Everyone turns to the side to get the call. Pruer turns to the side, then goes back to a center position and just snaps the ball. And the offensive line was ready, but none of the skill position players were. And what was a third and three turned into a disaster. And a punt for Western Oregon on the final play of the first quarter. And the score at the end of 15, the Wolves three, the Havlina is nothing in 30 seconds. We'll be right back. This is the Havlina Sports Network and KTAI. Timug's offense back on the field to start the second quarter of play. They trail three to nothing. They open with two receivers. And Nick Pellerin in the Wildcat. Takes a high snap, runs left side. Tries to turn the corner. Gets to about the 20. And is running out of bounds around the original line of scrimmage. Hogs through. One quarter of play with 102 yards on offense compared to just 29 for Western Oregon. The difference in the game was the fumble by Tyler Wilson that was returned past midfield. Western Oregon needed to cover only 16 more yards to set up for an Adrian Saldana field goal. That is the only score we've had in this game so far. Shotgun. Or check that pistol formation, two receivers. High snap, that brings it down. Looking left side on an out route, caught by Wilson, fighting through a tackler across the 30, still going near the 35. That should be a fresh set of downs for the Hogs. And now a late flag gets thrown. And now Torrey Thomas clapping in the face of one of the Western Oregon players. He's lucky he didn't get another penalty right there for taunting. And we'll check the call. And one of the coaches, about 10 yards out in the field, screaming at one of the players in the offensive huddle. And we saw a little bit of this last week for the Havilina. Silly penalties at the end of the half helped Highlands turn what would have been a field goal into a touchdown. Obviously, it didn't affect the team's ability to get a win in the end, but some unnecessary stretch for co stress for Coach Darren Wilkinson and his staff. Hawks committed 15 penalties last week. And we're still waiting to get the call. It might be offsetting, but we shall see. Each team with only one penalty so far in this game. And the discussion is still ongoing. The referees need to make note of who the foul is against if it's a personal foul. The ball is spotted at the 33, and the referee does indeed say first down. Because I didn't have them. And the referee leaving his mic on as he discusses the play with the umpire, which leads to a moment of levity for everyone here at Havelina Stadium. And now the only hope is that there aren't more penalties to announce. The referee is still discussing this with the umpire. Now they call in one of the side judges. James Miner is our head official today. Brad Markham is the umpire who's, who's discussing things with. Now the referees go back to their regular positions. And I have to make note of one other thing. The field judge, his name is Erskine Lightfoot. And when you have a name like that, it needs to get a mention on the broadcast. At least that's one man's opinion. But as it is, first and ten from the 33. Shotgun, two receivers. High snap, Denver bobbles it, now brings it down, gives it to Pellerin, left side. Met in the backfield, dropped. 
for a four-yard loss. Hawks had a number of issues with the snap in the first two games, especially against Commerce. But that's the first time that problem has reared its head in, over the course of the last three weeks. And second down and 14 coming up. Detmer, pass, right flat for a Pellerin, turns around to catch it, crosses the 30, cuts back inside past the 35. Written out, written out of bounds, up past the 35, a gain of about seven. Another third down and manageable for the Hogs. Ball is on the right hash, and players shuffling in and out for Darren Wilkinson and this offense. Came into this game averaging nearly 30 points a game and 360 total yards. They're not in the top half of the conference in total yards, run, rushing yards, or passing yards, but this offense has shown itself to be capable, especially last week. Denver looking, right side caught by Donovan Moore. He's past the marker and will have a first down. Great job by Moore holding onto the pass. He got hit immediately by the man in coverage, Derek Parnell but held on for the first down. A simple comeback route. Detmer and Moore on the same page to move the chains. Second first down of the drive for the Havilinas trying to cross midfield for the second time this evening. Six completions and eight attempts for Corey Detmer Jr. thus far. Pistol, two tight ends and two receivers, both tight ends left side. Chest high snap to Detmer. Over the middle has Hertel who who moves his way past midfield, fought through a tackle, and was finally tripped up by Nate Proctor. A gain of eight for Hertel. That's his third catch of the season. And Kingsville is back on the Western Oregon side of the field. 11.58 to go, clock running here in the second quarter. 3-0 Wolves. Moore and Dilworth are the receivers. Another shotgun as Torrey Thomas goes in motion to the left side of the line. Blitz being shown by the Wolves. Here they come. Give to Carr through the line. Right side, 40. Middle of the field to the 35 to the 32. Before he is brought down. Another first down for the Hogs. And their offense quickly going no huddle. Detmer calling for a fire drill on offense. Everyone moves out to their positions quickly. Four receivers, three to the right. Right flat, Moore, one man in front of him, cuts left across the 30 and is swarmed under at the 27. Coming off the line to make the tackle was Jake Blackburn. And Kingsville's offense moving quickly once again. Second and five, play fake to Carr. Detmer looking over the middle into the flat for Moore. Moore fighting his way towards the marker. He's gonna be a little bit short. Brent Hurtel looked like he was wide open down the middle of the field and Detmer never saw him. Third down and a yard. And Josh Hockless comes back in. And if the injury to Posada knocks him out, you would expect to see Hockless getting more playing time. That's what we've seen in the last few possessions. Hockless, Thomas, and, her t and Brent Hertel are the three tight ends right side. Carr, the deep man, single back. Now two tight ends move left side. Play fake to Carr. Detmer under pressure gets sacked back at the 32. Bo Heiberger in for the takedown, and it's fourth down. Tamuk tried to run on, on fourth and short earlier. It didn't work. They tried to pass here, and that fails as well. And now with it fourth down and 10, Julio De La Garza will try for what would, what would be his longest field goal of the season, a 49-yarder. He, he has a 45-yarder to his credit this season. He kicked two field goals last week, this ball being spotted on the right hash. Good snap, Rossellini gets it down. A line drive kick, and it is no good. De La Garza just couldn't bend it to the left enough. And for the second time in this game, the Hawks cross midfield but have nothing to show for it. Western Oregon goes back on offense. And it might take a Havelina turnover 
to help this offense get in a position to get on the scoreboard. Ball is spotted at the Western Oregon 32. Curry shotgun three receivers. 9.40 to play before halftime. The halftime kickoff that will go to the Wolves. Man in motion left side, that's Tingstad. Play fake, right flat pass caught by Prince. Right side 35, a flag comes in from the secondary as running out of bounds before he gets to the 45 is Prince. We'll check the penalty. And Western Oregon seems content to accept the fact it is on them as they are not moving towards where the line of scrimmage would be if it was on the Javelinas. They get Anthony Bradley for the offensive pass interference penalty. And he, you could see he was, if you're looking at the replay, him blocking at about the same time the ball was thrown. The rule is that you can block in those situations, I believe it's as long as it's within a yard of the line of scrimmage. And that was a call that really could have gone either way. But the refs throw the flag and another penalty backs the Wolves up. And they're going to need a timeout to talk things over with 9.19 to go here in the second quarter. The score is 3-0 Western Oregon. The Wolves lead it. They scored with 11.36 to go on an Adrian Saldana, Saldana field goal that was set up by a fumble recovery and return by Dominic Aquina. That fumble was forced by Nate Proctor after a 55-yard hookup between Coy Detmer Jr. and Tyler Wilson. That turned into a scoring opportunity for Western Oregon that's resulted in the only points we have on the scoreboard so far in this game. And this is the second consecutive drive that the Wolves have quickly been beset by a debilitating penalty. They had a face mask on their last series that knocked them back 15 yards. Now they have an offensive pass interference call that sets them up with first and 25 on their own 17. Hundred and forty seven yards of total offense for the Hogs so far in this one. Western Oregon with just twenty nine yards, including zero yards rushing on eight attempts. So if their plan was to get this running game going early, it has failed miserably. Kingsville's defense has been on its game in the early going so far. Offense has been able to move the ball. But they've just been unable to capitalize on a couple of opportunities in Western Oregon territory. Defense wants to give them at least one more shot before we hit halftime. Offset eye formation. Amari Land is the deep back. Land came into this game as the Wolves' leading rusher. Curry with a play fake. Blitz coming. Being chased inside the five and gets dropped. Nick Stiff and Vaughn Taylor take him down for a 15-yard loss. And Curry did not see the pressure coming from the backside. That really was Stiff's sack. And Curry's lucky he didn't fumble. He was starting a throwing motion when Stiff got to him. Had the ball in one hand. And that could have very easily popped loose and been either a touchdown or a safety. Now second and 38. Mack and Prince are the two receivers for Curry. Land is the deep back. With 330 yards to his credit so far this season. Gives to Land right into the line. Gets across the 5 to about the 8. And a short run will make it 3rd down and 33. And all you're trying to do here if you're the Wolves is, let's say, gain 10 or 12 yards. Get to the 20. Get away from your end zone a little bit. And punt the football without the punter standing a couple inches from the back of the end zone. Third and 33. Offset eye formation for Curry. Curry gives it to Land through the middle of the line. Crosses the 10 to the 11. A gain of three. 
And fourth down coming out with under eight minutes to go before we hit halftime. Perkins and Jackson will go back to receive this punt. This will be the third boot of the day for Gross, as long as 54 yards. He's averaging 44.7 today, which is more than 10 yards better than his average on the season. Standing about five yards deep in his end zone. Jackson at the 50. At his own 45 is Perkins. And getting it off were the Wolves. J Jack Perkins bobbles it. And has to fall on it at just about the same time the ball went out of bounds. And there's a flag at about the 10-yard line. And the initial signal is offsides against the Havilians. I would think Western Oregon would decline this. You're probably not going to get a better result than giving the Hogs the ball at their own 41. Ryan Martinez, the guilty party, but the penalty gets declined. That was a change in field position of 50 yards from the Western Oregon 11 to the Tamuka 41. Good day so far for Andrew Gross. He's probably been the most valuable player in this game other than Nate Proctor and Dominic Aquina. He's been the most valuable player on offense, I think you could say. First and ten. Detmer with Nick Peller in the deep man. Two tight ends go in motion. Thomas and Hertel switch sides. Play action fake. Blitz, blitz coming past left flat. Short hops more. A man in Detmer's face immediately made him get that pass off inaccurately. That was Ryan Manitti who got in there and forced the hurried throw. And the Wolves have kind of picked their spots on defense. They've been effective a few times when they really needed to be. Empty backfield for Detmer. Three receivers right, two to the left. Three down linemen for the Wolves. Detmer to throw, steps up in the pocket. Right flat for Hertel, crosses midfield. He's got a first down to the 47. A 12-yard gain. Brent Hertel's second catch of the day. And there's a man down behind the line of scrimmage in a Wolf player and Detmer the first over to over to check on Court Hammond first down, have a Official timeout for injury. Hertel entered this game with two catches for eight yards he's got two for 20 already in this game and in pregame I said I thought Ro Posada would really be an important target for Coy Detmer Jr. tonight Posada Caught one pass for 16 yards and left because of an injury. Has not returned. And you wonder if now Hertel is the guy who's picking up that slack on offense. Because Posada has been kind of a go-to guy for Detmer so far this season. Not deep passes. 18 catches for 125 yards coming into today. But he had two big catches to convert first downs against Highlands. And ended the night with eight grabs. So Hertel with two already to his credit. Posada is the only other tight end who has a reception. Hertel might be a guy that Detmer leans on as we move forward in this game. There's 7:04 to play in the second quarter. It's three nothing Western Oregon. The Hawks entered this game off a win right here last week over New Mexico Highlands. Western Oregon has won two in a row, and their offense has lit up the scoreboard on both occasions. A 38-13 win. Two weeks ago against Humboldt State and a 54-13 trouncing of Simon Fraser a week ago. Western Oregon out of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference as Hammond has helped off the field. And a unique college football conference, the GNAC certainly is. They only have five teams, so everybody plays each other twice. And for the Wolves, they've been through the conference once. They're 2-2. Two and two. And they'll start another go around next week when they visit Central Washington, the number 14 team in the country. First and 10 with the 47 here in quarter number two. Two men in the backfield. Hertel to the right of Detmer. Behind him is Pellerin, two receivers. And the tight ends go in motion. And now one of the Western Oregon players jumps off sides. The ball was snapped. 
which is a smart play by the center. And all of a sudden, it became a fire drill in the backfield, everyone going for the football. And I'm pretty sure that penalty is going to go against Twister McComas. And they call Partita for an illegal snap. I wonder if they're saying he did something to cause McComas to jump off sides. But that looked like a simple case of, hey, he's off sides. I'm snapping the football. And Partita didn't do anything until McComas moved. But back to passes Detmer anyway. Left side. A comebacker for Moore, spins away from two tacklers, heads to the middle of the field, still cutting across the center of the field, losing yards, now gets back across the 45 and dives ahead to the 41. Donovan Moore slipped about six different tackles on that play, all to gain maybe an extra yard. Hogs gain 11, it's second down and four. That was certainly a strange call on that penalty. Partita didn't snap it until after McComas was off sides. But these refs know the rules better than I do. Shotgun. Two men split out. One to either side. Detmer gets the snap. Steps up in the pocket. Rolls right. Now he's going to run. Cuts left and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Had Pellerin to flip it to, but there were a few defenders standing around. Didn't want to put the ball in harm's way. Third and four. Clock under five and a half minutes before the half. Only three points on the board. They belong to the visitors. Hawks trying to get something onto that scoreboard before we hit a halftime. Brian Martinez, Jacob Armstrong, Aaron Dilworth go wide left. Alan Smith is to the right side. Snap to Detmer, four-man rush. Right play for Pellerin, bobbled and dropped. Detmer's throw a little bit too far out in front of Pellerin, off his fingertips. And fourth down coming up. And Detmer more than a little bit frustrated, I'm sure, coming off the field as De La Garza will try and pin the Wolves deep one more time. Detmer plenty accurate today, 11 of 15 which is better than 73% completion percentage for 135 yards. But just can't find that maybe one missing piece that this offense needs to get going today. Good snap to De La Garza. Tries to cough in corner to the left side. A high kick that's going to bounce out the five. It's caught, then tossed back into the field of play and fallen on it about the three. The two officials are on the spot with the call. And the call is that ball was down. They have kept it out of the end zone. Great special teams play by this Tamuk punt unit. And I think that was Alan Smith who caught it and tossed it back just before he crossed into the end zone. And Western Oregon starting a drive behind the eight ball once again at their own three-yard line. And with 4.47 to go, an enormous possession right here. If the Hogs can get a, a three and out and a punt, their offense should have great field position to try and get on the board before halftime, maybe even take the lead. If Western Oregon even gets to the 20 or the 30 and they're able to kill some clock, that will be a huge momentum swing for them. Back to pass, rolling left goes Curry. Has a man open, pass, caught the 20. 25 to the 30, cutting back inside and dropped right there. was Evander Willingham. There are two flags in the backfield. If this is holding in the end zone, it would be a safety. Now they're saying the penalty did not occur in the end zone. They called it on 66, the left tackle, Joseph Gonzalez. And looked like Gonzalez was pretty darn close to holding Caleb Valentine in the end zone. Valentine took an inside rush and Gonzalez had to grab him to prevent him from reaching the quarterback. They spot the ball at the one as the penalty goes half the distance. Not a huge loss in terms of yardage. 
Two men in the backfield, Jackson and Amari land with Curry. And now we get whistles. And I think the Havilinas want a timeout. I think Darren Wilkinson wants to know why that wasn't called holding in the end zone as opposed to at the one-yard line. Because looking at the replay, it was pretty close. There was not... I think if you look at the replay, it looks like Gonzalez did start holding Valentine before the players got into the end zone. And that's what led the referees to rule that it was not a safety, just a simple penalty. But if you're Wilkinson, those are two points and the ball that you would get if they did call it a safety. So you're going to probably argue tooth and nail about that call to at least have them hear you out. Not much of a chance they're going to change that call. But I'm sure Wilkinson wanted an explanation, and he got one. And it'll be first down in 12. Four and a half minutes to go. In quarter number two, three nothing Western Oregon. Defense has been the dominant story so far in this game. Curry again with two men in the backfield. Both running backs, Landon Jackson, with three receivers. Two to the left, two to the left, one to the right. Curry takes a chest high snap, play fake, rolls left. Blitz coming, throws it away. There was a receiver in the area. That was Bradley, and they're probably not going to call that grounding. Referees will always give the benefit of the doubt to the quarterback if there's a receiver even close to where the ball landed. And that is indeed the case here. Second down and 12. That was Tremichael Tutt who got in to put the pressure on Curry. And the Hogs, again, have gotten rushes in there on Curry so far in this game. And they do have a sack to their credit. That takedown courtesy of Nick Stiff. Second and 12, single back. And keeping it sneaking ahead is Curry, and he gets all the way to the eight. Curry plenty patient on that run. That's a play that Highlands ran more than once last week with some success. Third down and four. Hogs have two timeouts remaining. Third down about five for the Wolves. Land and Jackson once again in with three receivers. And Curry started pushing on that play, then cut to the right and found some space to run. Three receivers on third down. Back to pass goes Curry. Blitz coming. Pass left side incomplete. Short hopping Anthony Bradley. And another fourth down for the Wolves. Western Oregon one of seven on third downs today. Hogs only give up those plays 27% of the time coming into today, and that percentage has only gotten better. 3.37 to go. Donovan Moore now replaces Connor Perkins. Him and Aaron Jackson back to receive this punt. And Andrew Gross on to kick it once again. Gets the snap, gets it off in plenty of time. A short kick that bounces at the 40. High bounce and goes past midfield. And rolls to the Tamuk 44. Not much chance for Jackson or Moore to feel it. Obviously, you'd like to pre prevent that bounce that went about 15 yards. But when a punt lands 10 yards ahead of where you're expecting it to go, not much you can do as a punt returner. Plus, most important thing on a punt, obviously, is you get in the football. You don't want to jeopardize that in any way. Hogs had a punt kind of go awry last week as a, a Highlands boot hit Devin Milbert in the helmet, and the Cowboys were able to fall on it, and the Hogs almost lost another punt that Donovan Moore dropped. Aaron Jackson was the man on the spot to recover that punt and present, prevent a disaster for the Javelinas. And so the Hogs will start now at their own 44. Their longest march so far this season, so far in this game. 
was their 11 play 45 yard drive on their first possession of the second quarter. They have another drive that went down as 55 yards. That was their first possession, their one play possession where Tyler Wilson fumbled after a long reception from Coy Detmer Jr. Their longest sustained march was not their last drive, but the one before that. And that ended with Julio de la Garza missing from 49 yards out. Western Oregon's defense heading onto the field. For Kingsville, this will be their eighth possession of the night. Detmer comes out with two receivers, Tyler Wilson and Alan Smith. One on either side, 3.25 to play in the first half. Jeff Carr is the lone setback. Of course, a shotgun formation. The tight ends, Hertel and Thomas go in motion. They split out to the right side in the slot. Detmer to throw, looking down the middle, throwing deep for Wilson, incomplete around the 35. Had Hertel looked open crossing the field, but Detmer looking for the big play, couldn't hook up with Wilson. And a very glaring disparity in terms of total yards. 135 for the Hawks, still just 29 for the Wolves. But the Hawks still trying to get on the scoreboard. They trail three to nothing. Two receivers right. They're going to throw again. Gets hit in the backfield and he will get sacked. The ball is out. A scrum for it, no signal yet. Referee's waiting for a clock stoppage. It is having a football, but the trainer's being waved on the field. I believe that was Isaiah Molden who got in on Detmer. That's the third sack of the game for the Wolves in this one. And protection, you knew it was going to be a factor coming into this game. Unfortunately, it has not been up to the level that Coach Wilkinson and his staff would like to see. That was Nate Proctor who got the sack. And for Proctor, that is his second sack of the day. Ball spotted back at the 38. This will be third and 16. And it appears Kate, it was Coy Detmer Jr. who was shaken up on that play. Casey, Russell, Casey Rosalini is in at quarterback. Rosalini came in for one play against Eastern Threw an incompletion, and then Detmer came back and played the rest of that game. Rosalini with five receivers thrown into a third and 16. Wolves show blitz. They bring four. Free man coming in. Rosalini steps up, trying to run, is tackled. The ball came out after he was down. And, at quarterback for the Huggies, and it will be fourth down. And no one picked up Bo Heiberger coming in on a blitz. And the Heavenly is just fortunate they escaped that play with the opportunity to punt. Detmer did miss the second half of the Angelo State game with an injury. Cade Dial played the second half of that game. Rossellini is the backup now. And you expect this to be his game if Detmer can't get well in a hurry. De La Garza punting it to Ryan Reynolds. Fair catch, makes it at the 21-yard line. It's a 43-yard punt by De La Garza. And first and 10 for Western Oregon. They have two timeouts and 2.03 to try and add to a 3 to nothing lead. But this is a... It has to be a difficult spot for Coach Arnie Ferguson and his offensive coordinator, Brian Harris. Their offense hasn't been able to move the ball this entire half. And you don't want to give the Hogs one more opportunity if you can't gain any yards. But you still want to be aggressive. Obviously, it's still the first half. Do you try and take advantage of 
this opportunity and try to turn it into points? Are you, are you happy running out the clock and taking the second half kickoff? Play fake, keeping it himself, running through a hole as Ty Curry across the 30, gets to the 34. And there's a first down. Curry ran for 65 yards against Central Washington in week two of the season. And showcasing some of his mobility there as well. First and 10 to 34. Three down lineman for Tamuk. Snap to Curry. Play fake. Throwing left flat. Caught by Bradley. Or no, they say incomplete. Line judge on the spot to say that ball hit the ground. Second and 10. And give credit to Ty Curry so far in this half. Based on the numbers, I thought there would be a lot more chances for the Havilians to get turnovers and take advantage of bad throws. But he has not put the ball in harm's way so far in this game. Seminat and Crenshaw are the corners. The safety stiff, Williams and Hendricks. Pistol formation. Curry rolling left. Pass Incomplete as he threw it left side for Prince on a simple out route. Third down. Clock is still running, and I'm not sure why. That was an incomplete pass. The clock just ran at least an extra five seconds off for no reason. And no one appears to have noticed, so it will simply be third down. There were at least five seconds that ticked off that clock after the incompletion. Curry shotgun. Looking left. Now looking over the middle pass. Incomplete off the hands of Prince. Fourth down. So with 70 seconds, two timeouts, the Hogs figure to get the football back. And Casey Rosalini is throwing on the sideline, so he, it appears he will be the man to try and run this two-minute drill. But first, Andrew Gross has to get this punt off, and the Hogs have to secure it and try and return it. Donovan Moore and Aaron Jackson, the two men who will do that. Gross, with a block of the blitz coming in, gets the punt off, a short kick that bounces around the 37-yard line of Tamuk and goes straight out of bounds. And now flags fly in from far away. One of the Oregon players was immediately calling for a penalty. And Marquis Sampson is one of the guys who was telling the officials about some kind of a foul he thought was committed. So we will check the flag. And Sampson took a late shoulder. And that's Josh Wilson. Now, I don't think it was eight who committed the penalty. I'm trying to look at the replay and see what player it was. I don't think it was on Wilson. I think it might have been Aaron Jackson who just threw a late shoulder to Sampson as the ball was bouncing out of bounds. And that costs the Hogs 15 yards. So instead of at the 35, they start at the 20 with 103 to go. Rosalini hands off left side for Carr, cuts back towards the middle, gets to the 26. And Tamuk seems content to run this clock out and head to the half. Rosalini's trying to hurry up the offense. Clock's down to 47 seconds. Rosalini under center. Another gift to Carr, left side. And he is, looks like about a yard short of the first down. As the clock winds down towards 30 seconds. Western Oregon could use a timeout. They have two left. But they seem, to, they seem content to take their slim lead into the locker room. Tamuk does not have to run a play here. It's third and two from their own 28. I don't know why they would. You're just risking disaster if you do. First Lini with a play action. Left flat for Moore. Gets across the 30. Left sideline 35. Cuts back to the middle. 
and is tackled at about the 37 as time expires in the first half. A defensive-minded football game through 30 minutes. The score at the end of one half a play is the Western Oregon Wolves three and the Texas A&M Kingsville Havelinas nothing. And both teams head to the halftime locker room. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back here on the Havelina Sports Network and KTAI 91.1. We'll go over everything that happened in the first half of play. We'll go around the Lone Star Conference. We'll tell you all about what's been going on throughout the LSC, all that and more. At halftime, you are listening to the ha- to KTAI 91.1 and watching the Havelina Sports Network. Don't go away.
The Havelina Marching Band is on the field as we have halftime here at Havelina Stadium in the sixth game of the season for the Havelinas and the Western Oregon Wolves. And the Wolves hold a 3 to nothing edge in this one. They scored the only points of the game with 11.36 to go in the first quarter on a 43-yard field goal by Adrian Saldana. And since then, neither team has been able to find the end zone. The deepest penetration for either squad since then came when the Havilinas moved to the Oregon 32-yard line and missed a field goal after that. Defense has been the story in this game. The stat sheet, if you're a Havilina fan, looks fine. The Hogs with 180 and 82 total yards. They've limited Western Oregon to just 42 yards on 27 plays so far in this game. Coy Detmer Jr. is 11 of 16 for 135 yards, including a 50-yarder. Nick Carr, Nick Pellerin and Jeff Carr are both averaging better than four yards a carry. The Hogs have run for 58 yards between their two running backs. Donovan Moore is leading all players with six catches for 43 yards. But for the Hogs, that unfortunately is not translated to points on the scoreboard, as is obvious by the way the score stands right now. And Tamuk has just been unable to find, but unable to click when they've moved into Western Oregon territory. They've been on the Wolves' side of the field four times in this game, and those drives have ended with a fumble, a turnover on downs, a missed field goal, and a punt. Their longest drive technically was their 56-yard quote-unquote drive that comprised the first play of the game. They then drove 45 yards on 11 plays on a drive that began the second quarter and took almost five and a half minutes, but a 49-yard field goal by Julio De La Garza sailed wide to the right and that stands as the best scoring opportunity that the Havilinas have had so far in this game. Western Oregon's only score in this contest was set up by the fumble that was forced by Nate Proctor and recovered by Dominic Akana on the first play of the game. Akana ran that fumble back about 35 yards to the Havilina 41. Western Oregon then went 15 yards in six plays and Saldana drilled one from 43, and that made the score three to nothing. And Tumuk's offense has been able to move the ball fairly well, I guess you'd say between the 20s, or maybe you'd say between the 30s. But something has been missing when this team has moved into scoring position, and one of the biggest factors in this game has been Tumuk's inability to protect Coy Detmer Jr. Detmer was sacked four times in the first half, and as I mentioned in pregame, you knew that was going to be a good factor. This offensive line has struggled protecting the quarterback all season. Detmer already had to, has already had to sit out the second half of one game this season because of an injury. When he was hit, when he was trying to throw a pass against Angelo State, he gets sacked and has to come out of the game late in the first half tonight. And we'll have to see if Casey Rosalini is going to be the man under center in the second half. This would be the first extensive action that the redshirt sophomore has seen as a Havelina. He's only dropped back to pass twice this season. He's seen action in two games leading up to today, but only has thrown one pass, and that came two weeks ago against Eastern New Mexico. But the Hawks have to get this protection problem fixed. Whether it's Detmer or Rosalini, it's not going to matter if they can't protect them. And Oregon, Western Oregon's done it with a simple a four-man rush. They've done it by bringing blitzers on Rosalini's only real play dropping back to pass. A man came in free and ended up, and Rosalini got sacked on the player, I think, ended up getting back to the line of scrimmage. And the Hawks need to fix that problem. We've seen both Joseph Partita and Moses Horn see action at the center spot. Derenick Landers and and Jorge Rio started this game at the guard position with Armando Castillo and Justin Johnson, the tackles. There's been so much movement on that offensive line. All season, this is the second consecutive year that the Hogs have really had to shuffle their offensive line throughout the season. They just have not been able to find offensive linemen, unfortunately, who have stayed healthy. And that's such a critical area for any football team because, stating the obvious, but that affects 
if you have a running back hurt, well, that only affects your run game. You have a receiver hurt, that only affects your passing game. You have linemen get hurt, well, then that messes up everything. And the Hogs, for them, unfortunately, the most glaring liability as a result of those injuries has been an inability to protect the quarterback. And you certainly hope that Coy Detmer Jr. Is, is okay and is able to come back in the second half. But if the line doesn't figure out this a protection scheme that allows these blue and gold quarterbacks to have time to throw, well, then you could put you could put Aaron Rodgers back to there. It's not going to make much of a difference. Something has to change on the line for this team, not just in the second half, but over the course of the remainder of the season because you put a line like this out there against MSU Texas, and this offense is going to have a heck of a lot more trouble trying to move the ball and score points than what they're having tonight. Western Oregon's offense has been held in check pretty much. A lot of credit should go to Haskell Buff and this Havelina defense. They have not forced a turnover yet in this game, but they have really blunted the Wolves' attack. They only have three first downs so far in this contest, 42 total yards. They have 13 yards rushing on as many attempts. And Ty Curry, the quarterback, has their longest run with a 13-yard scramble. Curry just 3 of 14 for 29 yards. Mentioned in the pregame, the Hawks have held opponents to a completion percentage of just 41% entering today. They have been really outstanding Let's in the secondary, the limiting the completions for the opposing the quarterbacks. And Curry has been really unable to to get on the same page with his receivers. And it's been the result of a lot of different things, whether it's pressure by the Havelina defense or blitzing. The Hawks have gotten pressure on Curry. They only have one sack, but the and that sack came courtesy of Nick Stiff. But Curry has been under constant duress in the pocket in this game. And the Hawks are going to be looking to continue that in the second half. To Curry's credit, he has not turned the ball over in this game. He has a propensity to do that he's thrown one interception in every game this season eight total and more than once this season he has thrown multiple interceptions in a game but Curry has yet to put the ball in harm's way tonight although the Hawks will certainly be pushing for those opportunities in the second half we're going to take our second break here at halftime we'll come right back we'll take you around the Lone Star Conference and then we'll get you set up for the second half of football. Three to nothing is our score here at Havelina Stadium. The Western Oregon Wolves leading the Texas A&M Kingsville Havelinas. And the start of the second half, just minutes away, you are listening to KTAI 91.1 and tuning into the Havelina Sports Network. We'll be right back.
Western Oregon back on the field as the second half will be starting in just a few minutes here at Pepsi Stadium at Havelina Field. Plenty of scores around the Lone Star Conference as we check out the LSC scoreboard today. West Texas A&M leading UT Permian Basin in the fourth quarter by a score of 35-21. North Tarleton State is pitching a shutout at home against Eastern New Mexico at halftime, 24 to nothing. The Hogs will be there in two weeks to take on the Texans. Texas A&M Commerce leading in Wichita Falls 10 to 7. 12.09 to play in the second quarter. Still a lot of time to go in that game. And Angelo State and Western New Mexico are still scoreless in the first quarter. The Hogs and Darren Wilkinson, not the only Havelina team in action this weekend. We had Havelina Volleyball with a productive weekend on the road. Started off their weekend with a five-set victory on Friday over the Cameron Aggies, and they moved on to Wichita Falls today and disposed of Midwestern State in four sets. Madison Brabham making a case for Lone Star Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Reeled off a pair of double-doubles, or I should say triple-doubles, this weekend. She has five triple doubles in her last five matches as she helped the Havilians get back to 500 in conference, play their five and five. And Tanya Allen and her crew will be at home on Tuesday. They will host Angelo State. So be sure to come out and support the Havilina volleyball team as they take on the Angelo State Rambells on Tuesday at 7 p.m. The Havilina football team making their way out of the locker room. As we prepare for the second half of play, a 3-0 score, Western Oregon ahead of Kingsville. As we prepare to start the second half, Hogs with a big edge in total yards, 182 to 42. But still looking for their initial dent in the scoreboard. Adrian Saldana's 43-yard field goal with less than three and a half minutes gone in the first quarter represents the only mark on the score sheet for either team. And obviously the big storyline here to start the second half is who's going to be at quarterback? Will it be Casey Rosalini or will it be Coy Detmer Jr.? Rosalini has taken over the backup quarterback job from K. Dial. And he took the last four snaps of the second half. And I see Demmer coming out of the locker room, heading to the sideline. He does not have a helmet with him. And I will certainly keep you up to date as to any updates in that situation. Rosalini is throwing, however. And he is warming up like a guy who's ready to take the snaps over the course of these final 30 minutes. Rosalina would be the third different quarterback to throw a pass for the Havelinas this season. And that is far from an ideal situation for any head coach. And I talk, when, I talk to Darren, when I talked to Coach Wilkinson this week, he mentioned how he's been happy with the play he's seen from so many of these substitute players who've had to step in and take on big roles that maybe they weren't being expected to take on once the season started. But he thought this team had really taken that next man up mentality to heart. And some players who have stepped in have, have played well and filled the roles they've been asked to fill. And it'll be up to Casey Rosalini to continue that today if he is the quarterback in the second half. The Hogs had three different quarterbacks throw passes for them last year. Three different guys featured at the quarterback spot. Connor Smith started the season. Kay Dial took the majority of the snaps and started nine games. And Bo Riley was the star of the team's game against, I should say one of the stars of the team's game against Eastern New Mexico. Threw for 339 yards in that game. So Wilkinson, no stranger to working with different quarterbacks in the course of a season. But when an injury happens and you have to kind of adjust on the fly, it always makes things difficult. Last season when Dial replaced Smith and Riley replaced Dial, 
Those were situations when Wilkinson decided to make a change. Those weren't injuries. So when you're in a situa situation like this, it's an entirely different animal. But we won't find out right away. Julio De La Garza will kick it off. This will be the first kick return of the game for Western Oregon. Kick taken and actually letting it th go through the end zone is Curtis Anderson. So Anderson and Anthony Bradley still waiting for the first opportunity to return a kick. Their offense will begin at the 25-yard line. Curry just 3 of 14 for 29 yards in the second half. He also ran for 5 yards. His longest run being a 13-yarder. And we'll see what kind of adjustments Coach Arnie Ferguson, who's in his 14th year heading up this program, made in the halftime locker room. Three receivers with... Tyler Sweet to the right side on the slot. Pistol formation. Nico Jackson is the running back. Hand off Jackson. Left side gets rushed in the back. Breaks the tackle. Cuts back right. Makes another man miss. Cuts upfield across the 25. Middle of the field to the 30. Shakes off another tackler to the 32. And what could have been about a three-yard loss ends up being a seven-yard gain. And that's the longest run of the night for a non-quarterback for Western Oregon. And a player is down. I believe that's Ron Rose, the left guard, and Christian Needham. Racing off the sideline to replace him. And Rose is on one knee. He's going to have to come out for at least one play. And a couple of trainers tending to the senior guard from Klamath Falls, Oregon. And Rose... Anything but a brittle football player. Began his career with the Wolves by starting 20 consecutive football games. Did suffer an injury last year. And now walking off the field under his own power. 3-0 the score. Western Oregon leading Texas A&M Kingsville and with the ball to start the second half. Second down and three. Amari Land comes back in at running back. Three receivers again. Read option keeper and a first down run by Curry as he crosses the 35. Slung down by Nick Stiff. Fourth first down of the game for the visitors. And the number two tight end Evander Willingham comes in replacing Tyler Sweet. Receiver on the far side right is Chris Mack. For those of you listening on the radio, the Wolves going from right to left. Two men in the backfield with Curry. Land the deep man. Rolling left is Curry. Now trying to throw back right and pass just too far in front of Anthony Bradley. Incomplete. And that's one of the ways the Wolves have been trying to offset the pressure the Havilians have gotten is by rolling out Curry, trying to roll him away from the pressure. And they've done that a number of times tonight. Try to Crossfield misdirection there, but the hookup was not forthcoming. Second and ten. Bradley wide to the right. Near side left is Mack. Two men in the backfield. Pistol formation. Three down lineman for Tamuk. Rolling left is Curry. Looking pass complete to Mack along the left side. He should be about a yard short of a first down. And that is indeed where he is spotted. Third down and one. And everyone turning towards the sideline. They get the call in. Needham still in at left guard for Rose, who has not returned as of yet. Pistol formation again. Back to pass Curry. Here comes a blitz. Halls thro thro throws it for Bradley, who catches it across midfield. A one-handed catch for Bradley. Curry just kind of shoveled that out of his hand. To Bradley was crossing the middle of the field open. Bradley managed to corral it and crosses midfield. And a one-handed snag 
by the freshman from Sacramento, California. That play good for 13. Curry handoff to Lant up the middle, getting close to the 40 and is slung back by Jalen Harrison. Gain of about a yard and a fresh set of personnel comes in for Ferguson's team. Ferguson took over this team, as I mentioned, 14 years ago. They went five and six in their first season under him and then went 10 consecutive years without a losing season before they went four and six back in 2016. And he takes this squad to Kingsville looking for its first victory over the Javelinas. They've played the Hawks twice and are 0-2. Nico Jackson, the running back, three receivers left in a bunch formation. Blitz coming again. Curry looking right side, open man, caught across the 30 and moving to the 26-yard line with a first down is Ty John Prince. Or check that, Chris Mack. Number eight, Chris Mack. Right now by number 13. Gain of 14. And the Wolves are in scoring range for the second time tonight. Have not seen much of Ty John Prince who came into this game as the Wolves leading receiver. 17 catches for 246 yards. He is without a catch tonight. Shotgun Curry. Play action. No, read option keeper. Crossing the 20. To the 15, still going. He's got another first down to the 14, a 13-yard run. And Western Oregon out of the gate, looking like whatever adjustments they made in the locker room were the right ones. As night has fallen here in Kingsville, as you would expect, as we near 9 o'clock. Nico Jackson, the running back in the shotgun. Two receivers on either side. Curry with a blitz coming. Pass over the middle. Picked off. No, dropped by Devontae Williams. Another flag comes in. I don't know how they could call Williams for pass interference. It looked like he just cut inside of the receiver to go for the football. And that was a signal from the official coming in, pass interference. And they do indeed call interference on Williams. It looked like a pretty clean play from my perspective. It looked like Williams, like I said, just cut in front of the receiver to go for the football, which is supposed to be completely legal. But the ref had a better look at it than I did. Curry to throw. Looking left on a slant in the end zone. Touchdown to Anthony Bradley. Touchdown. Bradley caught it in front of Jordan Seminot. And Western Oregon gets in the end zone for the first time tonight. They start the half by going 75 yards. They're going to get Jordan Seminot for a face mask. And they'll enforce that on the kickoff. And here is a Adrian Saldana, who is perfect on 18 extra point attempts this season. 10.53 to go. We are here in the third quarter. Good snap, hold is down, kick is good. So with 10.53 to go in the third quarter, the score is Western Oregon 10 and Texas A&M Kingsville nothing. As I mentioned, the Wolves go 75 yards on nine plays to begin the second half, and Curry throws his 12th touchdown pass of the season, connecting with Bradley. He's got four touchdown grabs. That now leads Western Oregon. And the issue for the Javelinas, now they have to find a way to make up a double-digit deficit here in the second half with their backup quarterback running the show. And in all likelihood, they're going to start this drive at their own 25 with 
Saldana teeing up the kickoff at midfield. Now, obviously, if you are the Wolves, you could try and pooch this. Now, you don't want to get too cute and maybe kick the ball out of bounds. But you can eat. I think you, I mean, hey, I'm not a kicker, but I would feel like you'd easily be able to pooch this to the middle of the field. Brent Hertel is standing at about the 13. And if you could just pooch to him in the middle of the field, I feel like that would be ideal. But we'll see what Saldana does. Nope, he's just going to blast it through the end zone. The kick returners were like outfielders watching a home run ball sell over their head. They never took a step back. And Tamuk will indeed start this drive at the 25-yard line. And Detmer does have a helmet on. A lot of times in this situation, if a guy's hurt, they'll take his helmet away. Detmer has his helmet on, but it is Casey Rosalini who will lead the offense. The sophomore from Cypress Falls High School in Cypress, Texas, begins this drive with two receivers, two tight ends to the left, and the deep man who is Jeff Carr as the tailback. The tight ends, now there's one on either side. Second down, misdirection, head off to Carr, cuts up the middle and will not make it back. Actually does make it back to the line of scrimmage. No game. And the strategy now for this Wolves defense becomes pretty simple. You put eight men in the box. You try and slow down this running game and you make Casey Rosalini beat you. It's not a slight against Rosalini, but any defensive coordinator's thinking when the backup quarterback comes in is going to be, I want to, I want this guy to prove that he can beat our defense. And flinching on the offensive line. And I believe they'll get the Javelinas for five yards. That's the Tamuk with no gain on first down and then a false start right before their second down play. Where's Lee in a pistol formation? Back to throw, looking left. Out route to Wilson, who charges ahead across the 25, fighting defenders to get to about the 27, picks up about an extra yard or two. A gain of seven, it will be third down and eight. And there were two men on the previous play Proctor and Weber who faked a blitz and that caused Tamuk's right guard to move and that resulted in the false start. Rosalini a double-barreled shotgun with three receivers, two to the right. Third and seven. Here comes a blitz. Rosalini to throw. Over the middle, caught by Pellerin. He's got a first down to the 35, stretches to the 38. A gain of 10 and Tamuk moves the chains. And there's Casey Rosalini's first completion. Always good to get that first one out of the way. Or check that, I guess that was the second completion. He had the one to Wilson just a moment ago. So consecutive completions for the sophomore. First and 10. Kingsville trailing by 10. Looking to get on the board for the first time this evening. Pistol formation, the tight ends Hertel and Thomas move to the left side. Back to pass goes Rosalini, looking over the middle, pump fake. Now to Hertel, just out of his reach at the 45. Tried to float it over Proctor to Hertel, did Rosalini. But the pass just out of the reach of the tight end, second and 10. Good idea by Rosalini, but a tough throw that he just couldn't make. Second and 10. Pistol formation again. Her tail goes in motion to the right side. Hand off right for Pellerin. Trying to get around the corner. Trying to turn the corner on Heiberger. But gets thrown out of bounds by Weber. After a short gain. And it'll be fourth down. So 44 set him up for four. They give Pellerin two yards. Third and eight. And as much as Western is going to challenge this Tamuk running game and try and shut it down. 
If the Haas can make yardage on the ground, that'll be a huge help for Rosalini. Three receivers, two backs with Rosalini in the shotgun. Blitz being shown. Rosalini to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Left side incomplete. Looked like the jersey was being of Aaron Dilworth or Tyler Wilson was being grabbed by Micaiah Lee, but there was no call. It'll be fourth down. And here's De La Garza to punt. Reynolds back to receive this kick. De La Garza averaging 48 yards on his four kicks. He's dropped two inside the 20. No punt return so far for Reynolds. De La Garza, a high, good kick that's going to chase Reynolds back to the 20. It calls for a fair catch there and makes it. It's a 40-yard kick for De La Garza. It will be first down and 10 with the ball spotted on the right hash. Moose defense trying to recapture what they had going in the first half when they limited Western Oregon to just 42 yards of total offense. They almost doubled that on just their first drive, going 75 yards for the game's first touchdown. A turnover here would be a huge play for the Hogs. Four down linemen. Curry sends a man in motion. That's Reynolds, and now we get penalty flags. And it will be a false start. That's just the third penalty against Western Oregon today. Tamuk has given up six flags for 58 yards. Eight and a half minutes to go. First and 15. Ten nothing Wolves. Quarter number three. Curry moving to his left. Now throwing back over the middle. Seven out with a leaping interception at the 30. Left side to the 20. Cuts back to the middle. 15. Right side. 10. To the 5. Jordan Seven out. Touchdown, Avalinas. There's that turnover this team was looking for. The third pick of the year for Jordan Seminot and a weaving trip through the Western Oregon offense to the end zone. And all of a sudden, we have a four point game and Seminot looked like a punt returner making his way through a crowd for the touchdown. And now a player has to run on late. I believe it's Cody Gardner on the extra point team. Play clock at seven. Good snap. Rosalini gets it down. The extra point is good. So after all that fuss, the PAT still sails true. 8.22 to go in the third quarter. The score now, Western Oregon 10. Texas A&M Kingsville seven. And plenty of life has returned both to the sideline and the crowd here at Havelina Stadium. The third defensive or a special teams touchdown of the season for the Havelinas. Dynamite Jones had a pick six against Texas Wesley and the Hogs blocked a punt for a touchdown against Angelo and now Seminot with a pick six as he took it back 31 yards for the score. And really an ill-advised throw there by Curry into double coverage and Seminot with a real athletic play leaping high to snag that pick Moving left, then cutting back to the right to the middle of the field. Sliding through a little bit of a crowd and finishing it with a fl with flair in the end zone. And now we have a whole new ball game. Hogs down by just three. Their defense, though, has to go back to work. Villa Garza kicking it deep. And taking a couple yards deep by Anderson, bringing it out right side along the numbers. Cuts to the left, towards the middle of the field, trying to get past Allen Smith. Smith won't let him go. Throws him down at the 18-yard line. Good job by Smith, keeping contained, not letting Anderson get around him. So many times you see guys 
on the edges of those kicker turns. They come in too far. The returner just makes a left turn, goes around him, and has, say, 30 yards or more. Smith would not give up the edge. And Western Oregon will begin this drive inside their own 20. And now you wonder if there will be an infusion of life into this defense. They can come out and get another stop. And at the risk of stating the obvious, when the offense comes out and is facing a 10-point deficit compared to facing a 3-point deficit, it is a completely different feel. And the Havilene is hoping that that pick six really is the play that can ch turn the momentum in their favor in this game. Meanwhile, in Wichita Falls, Midwestern and Commerce are tied at 10 with two and a half minutes to go in the first half. There's two teams making it to the national tournament a year ago. And the LSC with three teams in the top 25 trying to place multiple squads in that competition for the second year in a row. But back to the matter at hand here at Pepsi Field at Havelina Stadium. So Curry now six straight games with at least one interception. You mentioned he has put the ball in harm's way before, did it on his last throw. Comes out in a pistol formation, hands off to Land, trying to cut right, goes up the middle to the 25, is falling on at about the 27. He has about an eight yard gain, second and two. Right Land up the middle, picks up about eight yards. Valentine, Taylor, and Brandon Jones are the three down linemen for the Hogs right now. Tut and Harrison are in at the linebacker spots. Curry, read option, handoff to land again through the middle to the 30. He's got a first down. Tackled at about the 32, and that will move the chains. Jackson, Stiff, Williams, Hendricks, Seminot, and Landez are the defensive backs in, and now Stiff leaves and Sean Sims comes back in. Seven and a half minutes to go. We are in the third quarter. It's 10-7 Western Oregon. The Hogs just got their first touchdown of the game on a Jordan Seminot pick six. Western Oregon on offense trying to recapture the momentum. Shotgun three receivers for Curry. Man in motion, Jeff Street. And now looking to throw is Bradley back left side for Curry, who is almost dropped behind the line of scrimmage, but gets around his man and picks up positive yardage to the 41-yard line. That play was almost a disaster. But Curry got around, I believe it was Jalen Harrison. And what looked like it was going to be a three-yard loss ends up being a nine-yard gain. The play almost took a little bit too long to develop. Harrison got back, but a little shoulder shake by Curry froze Harrison. And the quarterback able to beat the linebacker to the sideline. Second and one, handoff land. Left side, he's got a first down to the 45, pushing ahead to the 47, still going, picks up an extra yard. Another first down for Western Oregon. And the Wolves moving it methodically so far on this drive. Nearing midfield, six and a half minutes to go in the quarter. Jacob Clarkson in as Caleb Valentine needs a blow. Hogs in need of a stop right here. It's first and 10 at the Western Oregon 48. Curry to throw, blitz coming. Throwing it deep, right side, incomplete off the fingertips of Ty John Prince who had just run past the man in coverage, Aaron Jackson. And Jackson immediately discussing the play with his coach, Eddie Moten. Jackson, I think, might have been a little bit late picking up the route by Prince. Second 
second and ten. Jackson, the deep man in the backfield. Only four carries for nine yards for him tonight. Gets the ball here up the middle. Cutting left, met by Devontae Williams. And then gets help from Dynamite Jones, Fagata. A gain of only a yard. Third down and nine. And the Hawks have done a great job bottling up this Wolves running game. They're averaging under three yards per rush. Just 21 yards on, 58 yards I should say, on 21 attempts. Third down and nine, Ryan Reynolds and Anthony Bradley, the two receivers to the right side. Near side left is Chris Mack. Shotgun formation. Nico Jackson in the backfield with Curry. Chest high snap. Curry looks right, blitz coming, and a scramble gets to midfield and picks up a couple more after that. But Jamar Davis and Fagata were there to bring him down and bring this drive to an end. Hogs would be wise to play a punt safe right here. This is prime fake punt territory with the ball on the Tamuk 47, and it's only fourth down at about five. Gross to kick, Donovan Moore back to receive. And Highlands ran a fake punt that was successful last week if it had not been for a penalty. And just getting this one off and run into was the punter. There is no flag as the ball bounces out of bounds inside the Havelina 20. Gross is beside himself, and so are the coaches saying, how is it not a penalty for running into the punter? Even if it was running into the punter, it's fourth and six. So it would not be a first down. Arnie Ferguson still wants an explanation as the ball is spotted at the Havelina 12. And now a few Wolves players pointed to the video board saying, watch the replay. But the referee's mind, I'm sure, is made up. So it'll be first and 10 to Mook at the 12 yard line. And the Oregon player is still looking up at the video board wondering why there wasn't a flag. And I'd be hard pressed to come up with a reasonable explanation for that. It was clearly a Havelina player that made contact with Gross. I can't tell who it was. The only explanation I can think of is that they, that they're gonna say the punter made contact with the player because Gross's leg was coming back down. It landed on a Havelina. Maybe the officials are under the impression that Gross was acting when he ate the ground on that kick. That it all becomes a moot point now. The most important thing, the Hogs have the ball now with 4.31 to go in the third quarter. They trail 10-7. to And actually, if you look at the replay, looking at the replay again, Leandre Dever was right there when the contact was made and Dever grabbed his helmet as if to say, oh no, that's gonna be a penalty. But the Havelinas able to avoid the flag. And their offense comes back out. Rosalina to lead this unit once again. Two receivers to the near side, Aaron Dilworth and Tyler Wilson with Dilworth the slot man. Pistol formation, Jeff Carr is the deep back. Hogs, 89 yards away from the lead. Two tight ends who move from right to left. Rosalina hands off to Carr. Left side through a gap across the 15 to the 20 and runs out of bounds around the 21. He'll be very close to a first down. And the head linesman signaling move the chains. First and 10. Hogs with only 57 yards on the ground today. They're going to need to improve on that total. They want to win here tonight. Single back as Rosalini under center. Another hand up to Carr right up the middle is met quickly and dropped maybe a yard. Wolves ready for that run. Second down and long coming up. And an extra defensive back into the game. That's Micaiah Lee replacing Brian Sarbeck. 
Second and nine for Rosalini. Three of five so far for 30 yards. Detmer, if he is indeed done, finishes 11 of 16 for 136. No touchdowns or INTs. Pistol formation again. Chest high snap. Rosalini, quick pass left on an out route. Pass caught and tackled immediately as Tyler Wilson. And it looks like the Havlin on the sideline wanted a flag as Wilson did get slung down after the play, but didn't appear to be any malicious intent or a bone-jarring hit. They're going to spot it at the 27. Four-yard gain, third and five. For Wilson, that's his fourth catch of the game. Only Donovan Moore has more. The 11th third down of the day for the Hogs. They're 3 of 10 thus far. Back to pass goes Rosalini. Left side caught by Torrey Thomas. He's got a first down to the 36. Trying to strip the ball out are the Wolves. Thomas, though, holds on and uses that momentum to pick up five more yards. A lot of credit to the senior tight end. Those Oregon players are holding him up just to try, just to try and rip the football out. Thomas lost his helmet. He'll head to the sideline for a play. But Thomas kept his head, picked up 13, and moved the chains. And that was his first reception of the evening. He's got 10 on the season, and now we get whistles, and the Hogs will have to call a timeout. Detmer is on the sidelines, which is at least a good sign for his health. They didn't feel the need to put him in an ambulance or take him to the hospital for x-rays or anything like that. So that at least is a positive sign. But Rosalini, it seems, will have to be the man over the course of these final 17.06 if the Hogs want to pick up a victory. And he started off well, 5 of 7, completing over 70% of his passes for 47 yards. That completion of Thomas stands as his longest completion so far this evening. And through nearly three quarters, both teams even with 10 first downs. The Havilene is still with an advantage in total yards, 231 to 144. And leading the Wolves by more than 100 yards in passing yards, 183 to 80. 206 to play, and the backfield now empties out. Only Pellerin and Rosalini there as, we are in a, as the Hogs in a pistol formation. Give to Pellerin. Up the middle, met quickly, and he didn't go anywhere. And some extracurriculars between Armando Castillo and a very excited Nate Proctor. Second and ten. Tyler Wilson split out to the near side right. Far side left is Aaron Dilworth. Two tight ends, pistol formation, Nick Pellerin on the tailback. Play action, no handoff to Pellerin left side. Turns the corner to the 45, left sideline, knocked it around the 47. Good patience and then a quick burst from Pellerin to get around the left side and pick up seven. And it will be third down and three. Rosalini and company looking for their second, third down conversion on this drive. And I would be shocked if Western Oregon didn't bring a blitz. Two receivers right, two tight ends right. Pistol formation, now the tight ends Hertel and Torrey Thomas move to the left side. Rosalini to throw, blitz coming. Pass left side incomplete. And a late flag gets thrown in. And Derek Parnell is shot. And that referee certainly took his time making that call, but he threw the flag. I'm going to say Torrey Thomas was interfered with. And the Havilinas with new life, no doubt, after that penalty. And there was contact in that route. I was not expecting a flag, however.
And it certainly did not look like there was egregious contact between Parnell and Thomas. But the pass interference is called anyway. And Parnell... Parnell immediately heads to the official to discuss that flag. And Parnell not out of control in any way. It just looked like a reasonable discussion. Parnell probably just wants to know, what did you see? What did you think I did? It'll be a first down for Tamuk at the Western Oregon 43. One more first down and maybe some change. And they'll be in De La Garza's field goal range as we wind down in the last minute of the third quarter. Well, it's being shown by Western Oregon. Worst leader to throw, and a late false start flag comes in. I thought Justin Johnson moved, but the head linesman, once again, an official waiting an extra beat or two before he blew his whistle and made the call. I think it was the right call, but the official, you'd expect to have a little more conviction in his decision. Regardless, it's first and 15. Hogs still looking for a big play on offense. Three receivers, right, shotgun. And now a total mess on the offensive line. And that'll cost the Hogs five more yards. And no one seemed to know what the snap count was on that play. And first and 10 at the 43 for Western Oregon after a Wolves penalty has now become first and 20 after consecutive false starts. Three down linemen, a bunch of players showing a blitz for Oregon. They only bring three, however. Rosalini over the middle, pass tipped and picked off at the 40-yard line, intercepted by Jacob Aquina. And Western Oregon will get the football back. That ball looked like it was tipped at the line and just fluttered into the hands of Aquina. Rosalini was throwing for Donovan Moore. It was tipped past the line of scrimmage. And I believe it was Nate Proctor who got a hand on it. And Proctor really has been all over the field for the Wolves. It was Nate Proctor who made the play. Akina finished it off with the interception. Wolves football at their own 39. Curry giving it to Land. Left side beats Sean Landis to the corner. Closing in on midfield and crosses midfield to the 49-yard line. And a first down on the first play of this drive for Western Oregon. And a real painful missed opportunity there for the Javelinas. You have it first and 10 after a flag. In opposition territory, you get two false starts and then a tipped pass that results in an interception. And the final few seconds of the third quarter ticking away here at Pepsi Field at Havelina Stadium. One more quarter left to go. And the score with 45 minutes in the books. Western Oregon 10, Texas A&M Kingsville 7. We'll be right back with the fourth quarter of play here in Kingsville. You are watching the Havelina Sports Network. Don't go away. We'll return in 30 seconds.
First and ten for the Wolves to begin this fourth quarter at the Tumuk 49. Hogs showing blitz. Here they come. Curry right through the middle on the blitz to the 45. Sean Landis throws him down at the 43. A six-yard run. And second down and four on the docket for the Wolves. Hogs defense in desperate need of a stop here in the fourth quarter. Only a three-point deficit. So a field goal, certainly not the worst thing in the world for the Havilians, but they want to keep the Wolves off the board. Second and four. Hand off to Land through the middle. He's got a first down to the 38, met by Devontae Williams and pushed back right at the marker, but that'll move the chains. First and ten. First down number 12 for the visitors tonight. 10 to 7 our score. Western Oregon up by three trying to drive for more. Curry in a pistol formation. Two receivers left. One man in the backfield. Curry running right, has all kinds of room, crossing the 30, heading to the sideline to the 25, slides out at the 23. And a late shoulder block by Western Oregon. That was pretty similar to the block that Aaron Jackson got flagged for on a punt earlier in this game, but no call that time. As it is first and 10 from the 24. And that was Jermichael Tutt who got hit by Anthony Bradley pretty much after the play was over, but no flag was coming. That was, came out that time. Handoff to Fortier, met the line and turned back. Loss of a yard. And it'll be second and 10. Or check that, make that second down and 11 from the 25. Under 13 minutes to go in the fourth quarter in a three-point game. And Jermichael Tutt on that last play with the tackle in the backfield. Looking right is Curry. He gets drilled and sacked. Brandon Jones lays the big hit on the quarterback. The second sack of the night for the Javelinas. Curry with a blind side hit. And that's an eight yard loss. Third down and 19. And that pushes Western Oregon out of field goal range. And you would think their objective here just get back to the original line of scrimmage around the 25 and give Saldana a chance to kick another field goal. Four receivers, three to the, le three to the left, one man to the right, that's Chris Mack. Three down line and four to move. They only rush three. Curry to throw. Pocket collapsing. Rolling left. Under pressure. He gets sacked again. That was Tremichael Tut. Who nailed him for a five-yard loss. And first and 10 at the 24 turns into fourth down and 24 from the 38. Consecutive sacks. And Saldana is on the field. This would be, would be about a 55-yard field goal. The Hawks are setting up for a punt return. And Western Oregon looks like they're waiting for another player to come on the field. And now finally racing on late is Caleb Tingstad. Play clock's at four, at three, at two, at one. Play clock ran out. They got the play off the field goal try. Has the distance. And it is good. From 55, Adrian Saldana blasts it through on a play the Wolves just barely got off. And they lead 13 to 7. What a kick by Saldana. The senior kicker from West Covina, California. And that had probably at least five more yards on it. Kingsville had 
two returners back. They didn't even consider that West Norwich would try for a field goal. Friends, they neither, neither did I. But Saldana shows off his leg. And with 11.03 to go in the fourth quarter, the score is Western Oregon 13 and Tamuk 7. Saldana with Jeff Carr and Aaron Jackson back to receive this kickoff. Gets set to blast it deep. And there is the boot line drive down the center of the field. And that sails through the end zone about 10 yards past it. And first and 10 at the 25 for Casey, Ros Casey Rossellini. Western Oregon's offense has done just enough in this half to keep their team in front. Of course, the only score that the Havilinas have came on Jordan Seminot's 31-yard inter interception return, excuse me. Ball spotted on the right hash. Hogs go from right to left, if you're listening, via KTAI pistol formation. Jeff Carr behind Rosalini with two receivers right. That ends move to the left side. Play clock running out. Hogs just get it off. Rosalini, a, play at, a pump fake, throws a pass, batted in the air, incomplete. And that pass was swatted at the line. By, I believe, Twister McComas. Second and ten. Royce Lean with two receivers, one to either side. Alan Smith wide to the near side left. Pistol formation. Hand out to Carr. Up the middle, runs into a wall, gets maybe a yard. Second down goes for just a short gain. It'll be third and nine. Hogs four of eleven on third down. They they open with an empty backfield. Four down linemen for the Wolves. Time to throw for Rosalini. Rolling right. Thinking about running. Now throws it deep for Martinez. Incomplete. Tried to hit Martinez along the sideline. The ball just fluttered out of bounds. Hogs go three and out. They're the guards that have punted to Reynolds. Punt number six for the senior De La Garza. Good snap from Johnson. Left-footed kick is going to bounce at the 40 and keep rolling to Reynolds at the 30. He picks it up and is tackled immediately by Jacob Clarkson. Clarkson 44-yard punt, zero on the return. On the spot with the tackle was the sophomore from Houston. And now the Hogs defense needs another stop. You wonder if another turnover would be necessary to give the offense a chance to take the lead. This defense already got one on the interception for a touchdown by Seminot. But other than that, Western Oregon has protected the football. Curry. 7 of 21 for just 71 yards with the one touchdown pass and the interception. The Wolves in terms of total yards in this game, they are at 165. The Havilene is at 239. But the Hogs gained the majority of those yards in the first half. At the end of the first half, of 
play. The Hogs are at 182. And they have yet to really get the offense going here in half number two. In the second half, the Hawks have had the ball four times. Their longest drive went for 35 yards. That was the one that was ended by the tipped interception by Jacob Aquina on a play that where Rosalini's pass was deflected by Nate Proctor. Other than that, the Hawks have moved the ball 15 yards and one yard. And that obviously doesn't count the interception for the touchdown. Curry with Land behind him. Land who has 51 yards on 10 carries tonight. And up to Land again. Slips through a couple of tackles in the backfield. Gets to the 36. Pushed ahead to the 39. Probably about a yard short of the first down. And I'm sure plenty of jawing as you probably could see Aaron Turner getting up with his hands in the air. Land gets it again. Swings right side, spins past the marker to the 43 before Vaughn Taylor brings him down. First and 10. Land in the first half had just four carries for 14 yards. He has been on his game here in half number two. That's 50 yards for him on eight carries in the second half. Receiver on, on either side, pistol formation. Hogs move early, but get back before the snap. Curry, hand off to Land again. Stumbles through the middle to the 49. Or check that, make that the 46, a three-yard run. And Nico Jackson will come in to give Land a little bit of a rest. Jackson, the six foot two inch junior, dot in the eye. Or right, perhaps I should say the deep man in the pistol. Western Oregon turning to the sideline, getting the call in from the from the bench. Curry back to throw. Blitz coming. Deep ball down the left side. Incomplete. Over through Anthony Bradley. The Wolves have not had a lot of success on those deep throws, but they keep trying. They are convinced if they go after these corners enough, as Bradley was being covered by Josh Wilson there, that eventually one of these big plays will hit. And for them right now, that's all you need is one more big play like that. You'll be in field goal range. You can kick a field goal to make this a two-score game. It's on the Hogs to make sure that doesn't happen. Third and seven, 8.23 to play in the fourth quarter. 13-7 Wolves over the Javelinas. Three receivers, double-barreled shotgun as Curry has two tailback, two running backs with him. Back to throw. Rolling left, going to run. Crosses midfield. He's got a first down to the 44. And that has been the biggest difference between the Javelinas and the Wolves. In the first half, the Javelinas had opportunities like this one and they just couldn't make the critical plays to turn those into sustained drives, into scoring marches. Here in the second half, the Wolves have made those plays, like the one there on the run by Curry. They've been able to convert the big third downs to keep these drives going. And they put themselves in positions to score points. Hand off Jackson into the line. He gets smothered immediately. Nothing there. For the Costa Mesa, California native. Second down and 10. Jamar Davis and Nick Stiff come in, replacing Sean Sims and Vaughn Taylor for this Tamuk defense. Landez, Williams, Seminot, Hendricks, Crenshaw and Stiff are the defensive backs on second and ten. 
Back to throw. Curry under pressure. Going to try and run. And he'll get taken down for a loss of maybe a half yard. There's a flag in the backfield. Curious to see if they call that a sack or not. As the official will give us the call. And that goes against Christian Needham. That dirty flag sponsored by ABC, dry cleaning system and laundry. So the sack or no sack becomes a moot point. Hogs take the penalty, second and 20. Under seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And this is getting real close to do or die time. The Havlingas cannot afford to allow another score, even a field goal. They want to have a chance to win this game. Three down linemen for the blue and gold. Pistol formation, Curry to throw. Right flat for Jackson. Backwards pass. Misses, Sean Landis misses a tackle. Jackson gets near midfield and runs into Devontae Williams. They exchange pleasantries and probably addresses so they can send each other Christmas cards. And third down. This will be third down, and they're going to mark Jackson just shy of midfield. Actually call it about the 48. So third and 18. Demuk showing blitz as Land is up near the line. Brandon Jones jumps off sides. Now a free play. Curry deep ball down the right side. Picked off by Peyton Hendricks. But Hendricks knows it's off sides. Tosses the ball aside and vents his frustration to Nick Stiff. No reason for Jones to be overly aggressive there. It's third and 18. The almost worst case scenario is A, you give him a free play, or B, you make it third and 13, and now this becomes a much more makeable situation. Make it third down and 13. No Kayla Valentine for the Hogs right now. Jacob Clarkson still in on the left side of the line. Ball moved to the 47, third and 13. Huge play in this football game. And the offense... Getting the call in from the sideline. Brian Harris, the OC, and Ryan Worthy, the backup quarterback, signaling in to Curry. Only one of them has the real signals, obviously. Back to throw Curry. Plenty of time over the middle. Incomplete, too high for Tyler Sweet. Dangerous throw there by Curry. So the offsides doesn't matter. Fourth down coming up. Coming up, another punt for Gross. And his objective here is obvious. Drop this punt inside the 10. This is his eighth punt. He is averaging 42.3 yards per boot. Haas uh, coming for a block. They almost block it, but Gross gets it off. Donovan Moore catches it at the 10. Moves left up the middle of the 15 to the 20. Right side, 25 to the 30. 35-40 along the numbers. Cuts back to the middle of the field to the 50. Right side, 45-40. 35 to the 30 down the sideline and slung out of bounds. Deep in Wolves territory at the 29. A 61-yard punt return for Donovan Moore. Moore had... The play of the game last week when he connected with Detmer, or Detmer connected with him on a 30-yard game-winning touchdown and an enormous punt return there. Those are the kind of plays that this coaching staff had in mind when they recruited Donovan Moore to come to Kingsville, a former Arizona Wildcat, a guy who played quarterback and receiver at junior college as well as in high school. DeRozalina to throw. Over the middle for Armstrong across the 20 to the 16. That'll move the chains. They faked the pass in the flat. Armstrong just snuck into the middle, and Rosalini found him for the completion. That's 13 yards. Tamuk just needs a touchdown. Just needs a touchdown because, you know, that's so easy with under five and a half minutes to go. Ball spotted at the 16. Tamuk in a pistol, two tight ends, receiver on either side. Hertel in motion left to right. 
And up to Carr. Gets away from him in the backfield. Upfield inside of the 15. And is brought down at the 13. That's a three-yard gain. And I can't imagine this wouldn't be four down territory for Tim That should change the play calling now. Because your objective on second down is just to make it third, shorter on third and fourth down, you would think. Shotgun for Rosalie, two receivers. Hertel moves to the right side into a slot. Now Thomas moves left to right into the slot. Rosalie looking right side flat for Thomas. Caught, makes a man miss, gets to about the 11. Thomas had the 10, but he stepped back to avoid the defender and never got back. That is a gain of only about two. And it will be third down and five. Play clock at 23 as Rosalini steps back into the huddle. A run play here would not be a bad decision with fourth down still available. Three receivers and a bunch left. Rosalini looking left. Plenty of time. Throwing left. Incomplete. Moore wants a flag. He was on the deck when that ball came in. And Rosalini might have thrown it to that side simply to shed a light on that penalty, but there was no call. And that goes down as a simple incompletion. Rosalini had all day to throw that football, but couldn't find an open man. Or if you ask him, maybe his open man got tackled. Fourth and five from the 11. Pistol formation. Two tight ends move to the right side, two receivers left. Rosalina to throw. Plenty of time again. Throwing left for Armstrong in the end zone. And double coverage incomplete. And Rosalini wants a flag again. But once again, no call. And looking at the replay of that third down play, there should have been a flag. The defensive back simply grabbed more around the shoulder pads and took him to the ground. And there was no call. But with 3.30 to go and two timeouts, the Hawks need another stop on defense. The more punt return goes to waste. Curry hands up to Land, right side. He is hit by Peyton Hendricks, trying to keep fighting ahead. Hendricks finally wrestles him down, a gain of maybe a yard. And it was not a bad play design for the Hogs on fourth down, but it did not look like there was anything worthy of a penalty. And got to give credit to Western Oregon. Good coverage on the play. I believe it was Joey Sinclair who was there. And there was just no room for Rosalina to fit that football in on that fourth down play. It was almost a roll away and then a fade route by Anderson who came in, then spun outside and headed towards the back pylon. But good coverage thwarted it. Second down, Curry keeps himself into the line and gets to about the 18. Another timeout for the Havlinas with 2.35 to go. Actually make that their second timeout. And that makes this third down the do or die play. You either get a stop here for Tamuk or the Wolves can simply run this clock out and sneak out of here with a six-point win. Men's volleyball season is well in action and Havlina basketball season is coming up. Tickets are available at HavlinaAthletics.com. Please stop by and get them there. Western Oregon, 3 of 13 on third down chances today. And got to give credit to the Havilena offensive line on that last series. They gave Rosalini all day to throw on a couple of occasions, but again, credit to the Western Oregon secondary. 
they were in good coverage, especially on that fourth down play, to prevent anyone from really coming open. This will be third down and four at the 18-yard line. So the entire playbook should be open to the Wolves on this one. They should, they can run it, they can throw it, they can call a quarterback draw. They could run a bootleg with Curry, whatever they want, whatever they, th they think is their best play here on third down. There shouldn't be anything from, from, from anything restricting them from using it. Curry in the shotgun with three receivers. 2.35 to go in the fourth quarter. 13-7 Wolves trying to run out this clock. Curry with land in the backfield. Keeps himself read option. Left side is hit near the marker. And this appears to be a first down. And indeed, that is the call. And give credit to... This offense and to Ty Curry, they have utilized Curry's mobility to perfection tonight. Took with only one timeout, letting the clock run for the moment. Curry on that read option, got to the outside, then cut inside Peyton Hendricks and Brandon Jones and got to the first down line. Amari Land right side, squeezes through a hole to the 30. An eight yard run for the running back and the Hawks have simply not had an answer for this Western Oregon running game here in the second half. They were outstanding in the first half. But in the second half, Western Oregon has made the necessary adjustments to have success on offense. This is going to be a really bitterly frustrating loss for this Havelina team. And up Jackson through the middle gets pushed across the first down line. And that will remove all doubt tonight. Nico Jackson on the carry for the world picks up another first down. And this is a loss that really is reminiscent of some of the games this team lost a year ago. So many games last season that after the final gun sounds, you go, darn it, this team should have won that game. I'm sure, and this team's probably going to go home thinking to themselves, we really should have should have won this football game. He's got to give credit to Western Oregon. They made, it's cliche, but they made the plays they needed to make on offense. They made a lot of clutch plays in the second half, especially on third downs. They sustained drives. The Highlanders just couldn't do that. In the first half, they had opportunities. But it just seemed like every time the Hogs would seem to find a rhythm, something would go wrong and throw a wrench into their possession. And that would be the end of it. For Western Oregon, twice in the second half, they were able to put together long drives that resulted in points. And the Havlin has had their chances, just unable to take advantage. And that was one of the themes of the 2017 season. Even games they would lose by 20 points. You lead the game going, man, they really had a chance to win that game. If one or two plays go differently, it changes the whole game. But the breaks and a few big plays going against the Javelinas once again tonight as Western Oregon running out the last minute of regulation here at Javelina State, and they will get to 3-3. Three and three. They will get to the mark that the Hogs were trying to get to tonight, that is 500. The Javelinas will fall to two and four. 
And Western Oregon takes a knee one last time. And another a sight that the Havlinas have, without a doubt, grown tired of seeing over the course of the last two years, an, an opponent celebrating on their field. As both teams shake hands at midfield. And the clock runs out here at Havilena Stadium. The final score between Western Oregon and Texas A&M Kingsville. The Wolves 13 and the Havilenas 7. We're going to take a, a quick break. We'll be right back in 60 seconds. With the post-game show, do not go anywhere. This is the Havilena Sports Network and KTAI 91.1. The Havilena football team just finishing listening to the alma mater in the right corner of the end zone to my right as the Havilena band playing the fight song one more time this evening. The final score once again, Western Oregon 13, the Havilena 7. A frustrating night for Darren Wilkinson's football team. Hogs outgained Western Oregon 257 to 210. And the Hogs threw for 100, 199 yards. They held Western Oregon just 80 yards through the air. Western Oregon did not, had two pass, or should, I should say, did not complete a single pass in the fourth quarter of this football game. But they finished the night with 130 yards on the ground. They outgained Tamuka on the ground 130 to 58. Amari Land with 15 carries for 76 yards. He really was the star of this game. He was the driving force on this offense. And for the Hogs, opportunities, they just were unable to take advantage of their longest drive of the game. Again, not counting the opening play of the game, which went for 56 yards. The Hogs did not have another play of that length for the rest of the game. Their longest play, if you take out that, Catch and run from Coy Detmer Jr. to Tyler Wilson. Covered 21 yards. That was a run by Nick Pellerin. And their longest drive, other than that, was a 45-yard march in the second quarter that ended with a missed field goal. Hogs moved into Western Oregon territory five times in this game. They had, they had ended this night with zero points. 
to show for their oppor- those opportunities. Their only score coming on a 31-yard interception return for a score by Jordan Seminat in the third quarter. And for the second time in this game, the Hawks start the contest with one quarterback and end it with a different one. Coy Detmer Jr., 11 for 16 for 136 yards. No touchdowns or interceptions, but was knocked out near the end of the first half. Casey Roselini had to finish the game. He finished 7 of 14 for 63 yards with an interception. And the Hogs had their best chance to take the lead in this game on their last series. Donovan Moore took a punt back 61 yards from his 10 all the way to the Western Oregon 29-yard line. The Hogs quickly picked up a first down and then had... A third down and five and a fourth down and five. Looked like they had a legitimate gripe on the third down play that there was not a penalty called. But an incompletion to Donovan Moore followed by another one on a pass to Jacob Armstrong. Good coverage on that play by Western Oregon. Hawks turned it over on downs and never got the ball back. The Wolves ran out the clock after that and left and are leaving town with a 13-7 victory. And for the Hawks, a disappointing start to what looked like a, a promising opportunity to start the game with a, a huge play, a play that ended, ended with a turnover. Western Oregon turned it into points. The only points of the first half, which ended with the score three to nothing. The Wolves added to that lead at 10:53 in the third quarter after driving 75 yards on nine plays when Anthony Bradley caught a six-yard touchdown pass from Ty Curry. Jordan Seminot got the Hogs on the board with his interception return at 8.22 to go in the quarter, but a 55-yard field goal by Adrian Saldana really proved to be the difference. That's the reason the Hogs had to go for that fourth down and couldn't kick a field goal. And Oregon, Western Oregon holds on to win this one by a score of 13-7. The Havlinas will be back at home. They will finish this four-week home slate by hosting MSU Texas at 7 p.m., next Saturday, and myself and Nate Cartisa will be there to bring you all the action live from this same spot at Pepsi Field at Havlina Stadium. The Hogs at MSU Texas will be on the air at 645 before kickoff at 7 p.m. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Mark and Sarah. We appreciate you tuning in for Havlina Football on this Saturday night, and we'll see you back here one week from then, but until then, take care and have a good night, everybody.